Oh, 谢谢。啊、uh, ，大家好。啊、uh, ，Good morning. So, ah,、uh, ah,、uh, thanks ONT, ah,、uh, for inviting ah、uh, me to to come to Shanghai here to ah、uh, introduce our journey of incorporating nanopore sequencing to um molecular pathology lab for actual medical use. Uh, let us introduce our hospital first. Uh, we are a、uh, Hong Kong Sanatorium and Hospital, and、uh, we have a molecular pathology laboratory in house to serve our patients and also、uh, patients from other、uh, local hospitals.、Uh, Clive Brown and、uh, Thomas Bray came to us, so they they already know we are a very uh, uh, tiny laboratory. However, our test menu are actually quite diverse. So we we have、um, uh, cancer、uh, genomic profiling, and and also reproductive medicine, and all, actually we have also also other、uh, application like、uh, clinical microbiology. So、um, we have、uh, our own、uh, in-house developed、uh, clinical test, and also we also、uh, purchase and evaluate diverse commercial vendor. To see what is the best、uh, clinical diagnostics for our patients. For for example, for cancer, we have、uh, a comprehensive profiling for blood cancer, and also we did、uh, germline、uh, hereditary uh, uh, cancer genetics. For reproductive medicine, we also、uh, did quite some genetic testing for IVF embryos to select the best one before implantation. We have、uh, endoplasty testing, and also uh, recently uh, chromosomal structural rearrangement、uh, diagnosis on IVF, IVF embryos. We we did that, and my supervisor, Dr. Chris Chen, already presented、uh, this exciting story、uh, in London College this year. So uh, before uh, because because of time, I will focus this talk on how nanopore sequencing can help in our、uh, blood cancer cases. So, so step back. What, what, what? Why, why I'm here, and why we need to to test nanopore sequencing. So, let's take a look at what actually molecular pathology do day day by day. So, we actually use、uh, different kinds of technologies to detect genetic variants. So, there are various various classes. For example,、um, uh, single nucleotide variant or small、uh, insertion or deletions. So, these are tiny genetic、uh, sequence mutation. Uh, it is already uh, uh, a lot of biomarkers, and using Sanger sequencing or next generation sequencing, we can reliably detect all these genetic variants、um, for diagnosis, for prognosis,、uh, and to guide the the best treatment plans, and also to track and to monitor the the, the progress of、uh, of the patients. But what bothers us is actually the structural variants. So these are the the large、uh, and rather uncharted area of human genome, and there are different、uh, mo uh, modalities already available to detect、uh, structural variants. However, there there is still something missing by current technologies. So we keep asking ourselves: Are there any、uh, exciting new technologies come up to help our patients to detect structural variants? So in 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 the current days, we we can if we have the cells from the patients, we can of course we can do conventional karyotyping. We can、uh, take a look at the uh, the uh, the alternative、uh, light and dark bands to visualize the chromosome under microscopy to to see okay are there any uh, uh, translocation or etc. For target approach, we can do a fish. We can have forensic probe to 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 ask okay what. Uh, this particular gene is there or not, or are、uh, broken apart? If we have DNA, we can, of course, we can do uh, even uh, whole genome sequencing by NGS. These are short reads, so for some cases, it,、uh, cases it works, but it needs high throughput and some kind, some 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 kind of long range information、uh, actually cannot be、uh, reliably detected and analyzed through short read sequencing. So there are some.、Uh, Uh, alternative approach to try to squeeze long-range DNA information into uh, uh, for short sequencing readout, like、uh, microfluidics, 
and other uh, mate pair sequencing. In our, in our own um, laboratory, also did conventional RT-PCR. If we have a known uh, biomarker, for example, BCR able to detect, it works. But how about uh, a, a rather larger uh, scale screening? We can have RNA-seq. Uh, when, we, when we evaluate different technologies, for example, uh, uh, whole genome sequencing by NGS, this is a short risk method. And we, we somehow found that uh, the, even for the best uh, state-of-the-art bioinformatics algorithms, the recall rate is rather um, not, not that satisfactory and not for proper routine clinical use. How about linguists? If we have uh, advanced instrumentation, uh, we can have uh, break down uh, and isolate long DNA fragments for short sequencing uh, readout. Um, however, this works for some cases, but the, the cost may be prohibitively expensive. For Mayo Clinic, they use a uh, pair sequencing approach to, to see whether they can help their uh, acute myeloid leukemia patients. Yes, it works. They can identify the translocation if the tumor burden is rather high. They can identify the gene in morph, however, they, uh, sometimes they still cannot identify the exact breakpoint sequence uh, of the structural variants. In our lab, we also published a paper uh, a, few, a few years ago. We, we did RNA-seq for, uh, for, for some of our cases. It works if there is RNA readout. So if there is RNA readout, for example, two genes from this, uh, different chromosomes joined together in RNA transcript, then this is a, a proper proxy to detect the structural variants in the DNA level. But what if there is no RNA sequence? Or what if there is non-productive? And we keep asking us why we need such a tiny sequencer in our lab. We are not, we are not space station. We, we, we are not jungle. We are not sequencing them in forest. So we are in Hong Kong. So we have a rather uh, well-equipped laboratory. We have single sequencing, we have uh, N NGS already. So why we need NLPOR sequencing? Uh, when we take a look at this chart, then we think we need to seriously think about this technology. Why? Because when we take a look at this chart, the x-axis is uh, the read length, and the y-axis is the throughput. For the read length, for the first generation sequencing, for the same guy at the bottom, okay, it's long read length, so one kilobase pair, at the best, throughput lower, and that's why they second gen, so next generation sequencing uh, at the uh, left top corner. We, we have a lot of these reads. The throughput is high, however, the read is short. So when we take a look at this chart, okay, the, the, the things pop up, nanopore sequencing. So longer read length with high enough throughput that is now tractable for human SV purpose. So this is important, and that's why we, uh, last, in the last two years, we, we, we think we need to seriously think about this technology. Another, another point is we need to have, to have quick answer. We are clinical lab. We are not research. We are not waiting uh, a batch of 10 archival samples and to have the answer a year later. We need to have quick diagnosis for us. For Sanger sequencing, even next generation sequencing, the throughput is high. We have a lot of sequences, but at the end of the sequencing run, what if we can have a fast platform to have sequences, I mean full length sequences, uh, at a quicker turnaround time? Nanopore sequencing can be an uh, attractive uh, uh, platform because the DNA going through the nanopore very fast, and we can have full length in terms of kilo base pair sequences, in terms of minutes, but not days. We, we are a pathology uh, laboratory, so we need to think more carefully, not just the technology, but uh, different operational aspects. For example, what is the total cost? Uh, when we think about the capital cost and the actual uh, running cost of this technology, uh, we, we find the, uh, the formula is actually quite interesting. 
we, we, we should not compare uh, nanopore sequencing with NGS. Uh, I, I mean the, for the total cost. Uh, I think it's not even not comparable to PCR machine because if we have the budget of buying a new PCR machine, we can actually buy a lot more uh, nanopore sequencing. So in, in our laboratory, actually we have, we can have mean ion sequencing, uh, mean ion sequencer to, to waiting for us. We, we don't need to wait for the sequencer. And also, we, we, uh, we, we need to have a long bit length, uh, quicker uh, turnaround time of sequences. That's OK. And how about accuracy? We, 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 we are keep, keep asking us whether it's good enough for structural variation. I think the answer is yes, not just by us, but by different uh, groups. So for, for example, for this case, they already uh, have a nanopore sequencing to have, a, a, to have a read, a single read, to cover the entire structural variance. Without clumsy, a complex reconstruction bioinformatics to reconstruct back. It's just a linear, direct readout of these structural variants, and it helps a lot. So in the uh, last two years, we already incorporating nanopore sequencing in our cases. And uh, a few weeks ago, we, we published the first case uh, in cancer genetics. Um, we uh, analyzed uh, acute myeloid leukemia cases. Uh, actually, uh, she is um, a 63 years old uh, lady with uh, AML diagnosis. For routine molecular testing, there are um, just free ITD and common gene fusion panel and even uh, NGS uh, DNA sequencing doesn't yield much, uh, much more. When we take a look at the cytogenetics, we, we, we see there is a translocation between uh, chromosome 10 and 12. We, we, we wonder, what, what, what is this? For, for the patient care, we, we move on to RNA-seq. And actually, we find another translocation between uh, chromosome 5 and 11. There are, this is a known driver for AML. I think uh, for, for at that time, it's fine. OK, we identify a cryptic translocation uh, driving the AML. But for the best case patient care, we need to have a, a more, more comprehensive picture of this patient. What, what if the translocation 10 and 12 is another driver? So we need to uh, tease out what is the actual nature of this translocation. And we, we, why not we try nanopore sequencing? With, with the actual, uh, uh, with, with the DNA we already have from the bone marrow sample, in less than an hour, we already, we already prepared our library for mean ion sequencing. And actually, at the six hour uh, after run, uh, sequencing running, we, we already have the answer. We have the exact breakpoint of the uh, translocation 10 and 12. And you can appreciate, we, we can have a reads, M50 of 11 kilobase pair, way, way longer than the existing technologies we have at a very, very uh, minimal cost. So when we take a look at uh, the, the actual sequence, at the bottom panel, you can see that the, the read length is very long. We can have, we, we can have a, a single read with, with 20 kilobase pair to show that which exact breakpoint and gene direction of this translocation. And in this case, OK, we, we know that it is joined into head-to-head -head configuration. So we predict this is actually a passenger structural variant. For the top panel, we are already uh, know that there is a cryptic translocation. And nanopore sequencing in the same part or, 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 uh, also uh, confirmed this uh, observation. Um, after that, uh, we uh, do quite some orthogonal confirmation. And I find it is rather difficult to do orthogonal confirmation. So for nanopore sequencing, it's easy. Just have a simple library prep, put it in m 9 and it works. Long with simple bioinformatics plus is enough to have the translocation identified. But we need to design quite some uh, difficult uh, primary design to avoid repeats, avoid the homopolymers, so that single sequencing works. With this exact breakpoint information, we can have the personalized biomarker for that particular case. We can have the serial monitoring of all these. Uh, translocation using simple DNA uh, breakpoint PCR. 
in another case, we have a gentleman, 34 years old, with T cell uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We um, or, uh, also perform uh, whole genome sequencing, uh, and, and at six hours, we already obtained a read to, to confirm there is a translocation between uh, uh, chromosome 14 and also uh, chromosome 11. What is interesting to us is, um, in, the, in the last case I presented, there is head-to-head um, -head configuration, uh, uh, I mean the translocation. So there is uh, no DNA, uh, no, no RNA transcript produced. And in this case, it's similar. It is translocated uh, at, at with the locus TRA and TLD, and it's a known transcriptional enhancer. So that's why the fusion, I mean the translocation, and fusing this gene to MMO2 will not have uh, RNA transcript uh, uh, gene fusion transcript produced. So that's why even with the RNA seq we cannot pick it up. We also see whether there are structural variants beyond translocation works in our cases. And in our leukemia cases, we can uh, reliably detect trisomy 8 and also 5Q uh, deletion, etc., rapidly using this platform. But all these are actually non non-targeted sequencing. And we also did targeted sequencing uh, using nanopore, uh, nanopore technologies, uh, which is the CRISPR. So essentially, it's just it, uh, blocking all the free ends of DNA by this phosphorylation. And after we have a, a locus of interest, we can design CRISPR uh, RNA guide RNA and to cut it. When we cut it, it releases the free ends of DNA so that the DNA at the, uh, the adapter sequence can ligate to it. We can have an uh, AML breakpoint, uh, exact breakpoint detector uh, under an hour with this technology. We can have multiple reads uh, f originating from the, the Cas9 guide RNA cutting site and have the reads at both directions. And at that particular genomic breakpoint, we know that there is translocation event. So all in all, I think we, uh, in these last two years, we, we, we go through a journey of incorporating nanopore sequencing into our, our clinical uh, uh, pathology use. I, I don't think nanopore sequencing uh, at that, this moment can replace all the instruments we have. We still have Sanger sequencing. We still have next generation sequencing. But I think if you, do, you, you are doing molecular pathology, I think you, you, you better uh, think about uh, this advanced technology because it actually complements the cytogenetics, next generation sequencing, and also other technologies like digital PCR in diagnosis and also monitoring. Uh, we find that the capital cost and the total cost is actually uh, rather uh, attractive and low, low enough for actual clinical use and the instrumentation is rather minimal. If you have PCR machine and you have pipette, I, I think you already can, can perform nanopore sequencing in your clinical lab. And the library prep is rather simple. And last but not least, I, 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 I come from a bioinformatics background in clinical lab. And I found that the, the bioinformatics part is rather simple because if you have the long read out, you, you, you don't need to have very uh, clumsy, complex bioinformatics algorithm to, to reconstruct the, the actual structural variants from short read pieces. When you have the long read out, it's simple. It's just a long sequencing read with simple blast. Then you can see uh, even uh, com complex translocation, etc. So uh, I would like to thank my supervisor uh, and also um, my director, uh, Dr. Emma Ma and Dr. Chris Chen for their guidance and also uh, my uh, wonderful colleagues, uh, especially Dr. Donna Ho and Dr. Yiwon Zhong, and our collaborators uh, from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, uh, University of Hong Kong, and also the referring um, uh, doctors. So thank you very much, and I would love to uh, take any questions. Thank you.